Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, where the truth of Genesis is unleashed. And today we ask the question, does death before sin make sense? Well, this idea we're discussing today reminds me of a skit by Christian comedian Tim Hawkins, where he uh, describes his mom spanking him for, for something he didn't do. Right. And then she finds out, well, he didn't do it, but she's not remorseful at all. And she says, well, that's for something you'll do later. <laughs> yeah, and, and then he says, you mean I have a spank account? <laughs> now, now, although many parents might relate to this sort of amusing situation, this form of retroactive punishment mm -hmm. is what some long-age compromisers have suggested as an answer to the powerful biblically supported, no death before sin argument right. that biblical creationists have used for years. Right. And since all compromised positions regarding Genesis, gap theory, progressive creation, theistic evolution, they, they require a time frame of millions of years, yeah. Christians who believe in long ages have to believe that the fossil record, which is a record of death, suffering, and disease, must have occurred before Adam sinned. Well, yeah. Almost no one argues for millions of years after Adam because of the chronogenealogies listed in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. Right. In the standard deep time view, mankind came near the end of this time. So hundreds of millions of years of death occurred before people supposedly appeared. However, this view that death came before people makes it impossible to take verses like Romans 5.12, as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, as plainly written. Because death, even human death, preceded the biblical date of creation of the first man by millions of years. And furthermore, as humans were the appointed rulers of creation, Genesis 1.28 states that, the fall affected all of those under mankind's dominion. Thus, the whole creation is groaning because God has subjected it to futility, as Romans 8 explains. Right. One consequence is that the original vegetarian diet of all animals, taught in verses like Genesis 1.29 and 30, to everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, was changed. Obviously, if all creatures were only eating plants before the creation was cursed, then biblically, fossils showing carnivorous activity, including tooth marks on bone and coprolites, that's fossil feces, containing bones of other creatures, must have occurred after the fall of man. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's why biblical creationists have highlighted the great flood recorded in Genesis 6 to 9 as a great mechanism for producing fossils. It explains the layers of rock and all the dead things in them as having been established after Adam sinned. In Exodus 20, verse 11, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. This totally destroys the long age paradigm. Everything in the universe was made in six days, is what that verse is telling us. But since long, age, long agers typically place uh, opinions, about scientific observations over scripture, they've attempted a variety of theological gymnastics over the years to, to overcome this obvious problem uh, of the millions of years paradigm. Now the latest attempt to counteract what many long ages have admitted is, is, is the clearest exegesis. Uh, right, in other words, the most plain and obvious understanding of the Genesis text. Right, uh, is, is a new concept developed by Christian philosophy professor and intelligent design leader Bill Dembski he proposes that God spanked mankind uh, by cursing the cosmos before Adam sinned. Uh, he did this because he knew the fall would happen, and so he extended the effects of the curse backwards before it actually occurred. And okay. in effect, uh, in this scenario, man arrives on the scene pre-punished for what he would later do. Yes, in his book, The End of Christianity, Dembski argues that mankind's fall into sin not only marred the creation after Adam, but also was retroactive. Yeah, now, now he, he admits that the clearest exegesis supports the young age position, but the, it, you know, explicitly says that he rejects that because of science. Right. right. Now, the, the rationale behind this stems from the concept that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was retroactive. The, the Bible clearly spa states, speaking of, uh, of Jesus, that there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men 
by which we must be saved. That's in Acts 4.12. So there was no different way of being saved in the Old Testament. Salvation has always come by grace through faith in the one true God on the basis of Christ's atoning death and bodily resurrection. Exactly. So the argument then is that if God saved people uh, retroactively before the event of Jesus' crucifixion to pay for sin, in effect saving people before the cause of salvation occurred, um, perhaps God could have cursed the world prior to Adam sinning, causing bad things to be in effect before the cause of bad things happened. But let's see if this concept is, is justified. Yeah, that, that's, that's where Dembski's going with, with, his, with his retroactive death here. Right. According to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary of Law, retroactive means extending in scope or effect to a prior time or to conditions that existed or originated in the past. Now, most people are familiar with the concept of a retroactive pay raise. It means you're given a lump sum payment calculated on the difference between your former and current pay extending back to a certain point in time, in addition to the pay increase from now on. Now, in effect, it, it, it's a method of choosing how much a bonus a person will get and does not actually change the rate of pay you receive before you got your pay raise. Um, note that it is an effect of a decision made by someone after the time the bonus is based upon has passed, um, or after the fact, you could say. Right now, unfortunately, we are aware of immoral governments imposing retroactive laws. Right. Uh, they are expressly forbidden by the constitutions of many free countries since they punish people for committing acts that they <laughs> violated uh, for, for when, they, when they violate a future law that they had no way of knowing at the right. time. God doesn't work like that. He doesn't do that. <laughs> for example, Cain and Abraham did not sin when they married their uh, Cain must have been a, a sister, a close relative, and right. Abraham is specifically a half-sister with yep. Sarah. Despite the Levitical prohibition, God imposed many years later. Right. The Bible speaks of God's work of salvation being done before the beginning of creation, yes. not afterwards. Yep. Now, a quick look at the related scriptures, um, something millions of years proponents sometimes appear to neglect to do, uh, reveal several passages in the Bible that actually show that God acted in a completely opposite way right. than yep. Dembski's proposing here. The Bible speaks of God's work of salvation being done from the beginning of creation, not afterwards. Uh, for example, in, in Hebrews 4.3, in discussing salvation rest, uh, God says, His works were finished from the foundation of the world. That's right. And in Matthew 25.34, it reminds us that at the eternal judgment, those that are saved will, quote, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? Because he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. It says that in Ephesians 1, 4. Right. This is not looking, uh, or uh, this is rather, a looking forward, right. not retroactively looking backward. It's the opposite of what Dembski is, uh, is proposing here. Right. Okay, so, so to me, I was saved at 27 years of age, right? But Jesus saved me for the foundations of the world, right. Right, according to God's word. Yeah. So the things God will do in the future, from our perspective, he's already done. Um, we're in time that God created, but the Lord isn't in time. He's in eternity, and he's the creator of time. I am not one of those whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. Uh, you read that in Revelation 13, 8. My name was in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. That's right. So... According to God's word, salvation occurred from the beginning and extended into the future, not retroactively into the past. So why then did Jesus have to be born, die, and rise again at a specific time in history? What then was the significance of that event? Perhaps a look into the relationship of God's church to himself will help explain. God's word often talks about the bride of Christ, that's the church, his chosen people, in a relationship to him in a, in, a, in a metaphorical sense, kind of an allegory, to marriage. Marriage is based on the relationship of God to his church. In context, Jewish marriages were often arranged and betrothal was considered being lawfully married already. This is why in Matthew 1.19 we read, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. 
Yes, Joseph was going to show Mary a great act of mercy right, right. by divorcing yes. her, even though there hadn't been an official uh, wedding ceremony. Because even though uh, he thought she'd been unfaithful, he didn't want her stoned as an ad adulteress. Yeah, the betrothed weren't permitted to have sex, the most intimate and personal aspect of the relationship, before the ceremony, but were otherwise committed to each other completely. Right. That physical act was the consummation of a promise as the two became, quote, one flesh, as right. it says in Genesis 2.24, and that was cited by Christ in Matthew 19, verses 4 and 5, as the words of the Creator. Right. In the same way, the church, the, the bride of Christ, right. us Christians, were betrothed before the foundations of the world. The physical ceremony, right. if, if you like, right. was consummated, uh, that was consummated by the, the events of de Christ's death and resurrection, right. Jesus' death and resurrection. That will be followed by the wedding feast, the marriage <laughs> supper of the Lamb, referred to in Revelation 9.19. Right. Because what God's done, um, is doing, will do, uh, Christians now experience a close relationship with God and have the constant indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, right. It is true that Jesus came once to put away sin. However, this was the fulfillment of a contract already in place. It's not like people weren't saved before and then you know, became saved after, after Jesus came. Right, so, so the concept of a retroactive fall, an event ending or extending punishments backward is unbiblical right. and is totally different from the preordained salvation explained in Scripture. Right. Like all compromise opinions, it's simply an attempt from the minds of men to blend essentially man's illusion of deep time into the Bible. For more information, be sure to check out some of the links in the video description below.